Welcome to Lesson 2, Making Adjusting Entries for Mike's Bikes. In the first lesson, in Lesson 1, we learned that Mike opened a bike shop called Mike's Bikes. He secured financing of $250,000. He incurred startup investing costs to buy a building of $180,000. He also incurred normal operating startup costs. And then finally, he sold some bikes. So at the, end, at the end of the first month, on July 31, he has balances in his database of 86600 in cash. He has a building of 180000 He has prepaid rent of 2400 He has inventory of, actually, uh, he has inventory of zero because when Mike sold those bikes last period, let's insert a blank row, he forgot to subtract $10,000 of the bikes that he sold from inventory. And now he has to sell 10, record $10,000 of the bikes that have been used up in operations. But here he sold them. So let's call this expense, cost of bikes sold. Cost of bikes sold expense. All right. So now let's add up all of Mike's cash. And we know he has 86.6. But his inventory, you'll see, will turn to zero right there because we need to remove his inventory from the books. And now, his first adjusting entry is to say, look, of all my assets, do any of these need to reflect uh, uh, a different value according to generally accepted accounting principles? And sure enough, the building, uh, the accountant for Mike says the building has a cost of 180000 and he will give it a zero salvage value. And he will say, at the end of 30 years, we think that, that uh, uh, the building will be equal to zero. So the depreciable cost is $180,000. We'll give it a life of 30 years. And so that is 360 months. So the building will have one month's worth of accounting depreciation, we call it. And accounting depreciation is calculated by taking the depreciable cost base of 180000 divided by the number of months. So the depreciation is 180000 divided by 360. His expense here is minus 500 for the building. And we subtract 500 from equity earned which uh, later in the course we're going to call equity earned retained earnings. But right now we call this expense depreciation expense. Next, we say of this 2400 that Mike had in uh, prepaid uh, rent, actually we meant to call that prepaid insurance, we have to subtract one twelfth of that rent or insurance because he's used up one twelfth of that policy. So we must subtract 200 from prepaid insurance and 200 from uh, equity earned and this is an expense and we're gonna put that as a rent expense. Next, the bike inventory is zero so we do not have to adjust a bike inventory. And uh, how about that note payable? Well we owed $210,000 and let's say that the bank charged us a 10% interest rate and uh, one month now has gone by. So let's go equal to 1 divided by 12. It gives us the amount of time in a year. The amount of interest that we owe the bank is equal to the amount we borrowed, 210000 times the annual interest rate times the amount of time in a year that has gone by and one month out of one year has gone by and so interest here is 1750 so Mike needs to make an adjusting entry to add 1750 to his liabilities and he has to subtract 1750 from his equity earned after making all adjusting entries we see that Mike now has balances in cash still of 866 and we can use the drag and fill command here for Excel. And we should be able to see that all of his assets right here, 268,300, should equal the sum of his liabilities and equity, which is 268,300. So let's make a nice dark box around that. 
and we see that our adjusted balances are in the bottom row of the database and we're going to call this adjusting journal entry number one and we're going to call the next two adjusting journal entries number two and three. Adjusting entries always happen on the last day of the accounting period. So to summarize, Mike has made journal entries during the year that mainly affect cash, during the month rather. At the end of the month, he has to make adjusting entries to conform with generally accepted accounting principles. Our building was used for one month out of 360, so we're going to write down 1 360th of the building's accounting value. The insurance costs 2400 At the end of one year, it will have no salvage or residual value. So the amount of insurance base that we're going to use up is 2400 It's going to be used up over 12 months. And so we take 2400 divided by 12 to get his monthly uh, amount of the insurance that has been used up. That's where we get 200 And in terms of the amount we owe the bank, the bank uh, alone was 210000 The interest rate was 10%. And the um, uh, number, the amount of time was equal to one month out of 12 months. And hence, the interest that we owe the bank is $210,000 times 10% divided by 12. And to prove that, we can use Excel minus 210 thousand times 0 0.10 times the quantity 1 over 12. We can use Excel to compute that for us. This comes near to the end of lesson two. Um, the name of this lesson again was making adjusting entries for Mike at the end of the first month. Recall that most of his transactions during the month, most of them affect cash. At the end of the month, we must adjust our assets and our liabilities to make sure they conform with generally accepted accounting principles. Now, at the end of the first month, Mike's adjusted balances on July 31 are in the bottom row for his balance sheet. All changes in his equity earned will, re will reflect his income, and all changes in cash during the period will reflect, be reflected in the statement of cash flows. That, my friends, ends our second lesson.